But first, we have Ellie Phillips. She is a showbiz reporter, a freelancer, and in fact, one of millions of freelancers who have not had any financial help, any support during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. It is shocking. We have been uh, in this lockdown, albeit restrictions are easing, but we've been in this lockdown for more than three months now. Can you imagine if you didn't have any money, any salary, any income coming in in that time where she is calling on the government to do more and Ellie Phillips uh, joins me now. Ellie, thank you so much for talking to us. First of all, what has life been like for you in this lockdown? So I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones because I... So I'm I'm a forgotten freelancer. I'm a forgotten... We're calling it forgotten PAYE. So I've had no income support from the government at all during this crisis for the most ridiculous reasons. Nothing at all. You've had no other... Have you had work coming in? So for me, that's why I class myself as a lucky one. I have still been able to pick up some shifts here and there. Um, They did drop for a while um, in the initial kind of lockdown period. I think that, you know, organisations, of course, were trying to, you know, rein in their their spending and however they could. And that's why freelancers are the first to lose work because as a freelancer, you're not stacked. You just don't get given more work or you have shifts cancelled or, or contracts, you know, terminated or indefinitely postponed. There's no kind of legal ramifications of that. So I do consider myself as a lucky one because I do still have some shifts and I still have both my parents are alive they have a home I have a, a my boyfriend is you know he's a key worker and he's still working so I'm never worried about where my next meal is going to come from or whether I'm going to have a roof over on my head or not whereas but I know that there are millions who are actually in that situation um and it's now at the point where many of them have already gone homeless so it is really really difficult um and it, it's you mentioned three months it's actually verging on four months now mm. and the government are just ignoring the pleas of these people who are desperate for financial aid. Oh, sorry, I, I've got so many questions to ask you. I don't even know where to start. Look, first of all, so so they these are people who wouldn't be eligible for the furlough scheme. Is that right? Any loans or grants that's been available are made available to people who are self-employed. This is something they wouldn't be eligible for. So I'm, I'm, I'm from a group called Forgotten PAYE. We represent the 1.7 million forgotten freelancers, but we're only a portion of those who've actually been excluded and locked out of financial aid. There are actually around three to five million taxpayers who've been identified by a group called Excluded UK. And Excluded UK are um, a community interest company who basically, they're just phenomenal. They've done so much research. They're providing support networks across the board. Um, but there are other groups. So they represent kind of everyone as a collective. They're also um, Forgotten Limited, limited company owners. You've also got um, new starters. So basically people who just change jobs at the wrong time. Um, and you've got newly self-employed, so people who don't have or didn't have a year's worth of uh, tax returns to show the government when we went into lockdown. They might do now, but the government are refusing to take those into account. Um, but basically the issue is that Oh, and this three to five million, by the way, doesn't even include people who haven't been furloughed. So obviously, as you know, employees of companies can request to be furloughed, but it's if the onus is on the, the company or the, the you know the employer to like approve that first. To approve it, yeah. And if they don't have the cash up front to do it, if they're a really small company, for example, because obviously they're paying the furlough and they're claiming it back, that might be a reason they don't want to. Um, but there are numerous reasons. There is no legal obligation for a company to do it. So that's a separate issue. We are talking about predominantly the excluded UK, the forgotten PAYE, are the people who don't even have the access. They don't even have an employer who can give them a yes or no. There just is no access for them. And the reason they don't have access are, for example, um, for the freelancers, for example, if you earn more of your income through PAYE, which is taxed at source, um, compared to the income that you earn from a traditional kind of invoice system, which is what most people think of when they think of someone who's self-employed, um, then you don't, you, you're not able to access the self-employment income support scheme. So, and that's just because of how you pay tax. They're not saying for one second that you haven't paid tax. The thing is because of how you pay tax, which is utterly ridiculous, given that HMRC have all of these records. Um, regardless, you know, if you if you've been paid through PAYE, your tax has come out straight away, and they have, they have records of that. If you pay on an invoice system where you give your tax return, they have records of all that. You've got to realise in the situation that HMRC 
they don't have to tell people how much tax they owe, so therefore they know exactly what they earn. So it can't be too complicated to determine what 80% of that amount is. Um, there are other issues, like, for example, um, for other self-employed people, well, for self-employed people in general, if you earn over £50,000, you are not eligible for any support, which is absolutely ridiculous in my mind because the cap of two and a half thousand pounds per month has already been put in place by the government for these schemes so no one can access more than that amount but to say that someone who is an employee of a company who could be earning millions could still get two and a half thousand pounds a month but someone who's self-employed uh, or a freelancer whatever you know this alternative they can't access support if they earn fifty thousand pounds and this could be a combined income so this could be for example you know, uh, two people who earn, you know, just over £25,000, they've had nothing, but they have a family of four to feed. Like, how can that be fair? And also the fact that self-employed people are being, uh, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're being mean tested, but employees aren't being mean tested. How is that fair and equal? In my opinion, it's discrimination. It's clear discrimination. You're discriminating against self-employed people. For freelancers, it's absolutely devastating because most of the work has gone for example if you were and this is people i'm from the media okay so i do presenting and i do uh, journalism so um there's a lot of advertising that's been pulled from for media companies so therefore they don't have the money the budget, um, in, the budget. yes so the, what the first thing they do is okay well you know we don't want to sack people but we, we we just don't have our freelancers so we'll give you the work off amongst other people and we won't pay the freelancers but this isn't just in media. What I've learned more and more throughout this process of helping with the Forgotten PAYE campaign is that it's, it's every industry. Oh, gosh. Um, frontline anybody industry. working in the arts, uh, oh, IT. Well, yeah, this, 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 every industry to, it, it will have some kind of so, freelancers, self-employed contractors working yeah, within it. I think that the, the real, real frustration here is that Rishi Sunak keeps trying to push out this idea that the only people who have been excluded are these like big fat cat company bosses who are putting money away in like you know offshore bank accounts that is absolutely not the case these are small to medium businesses you know they're family businesses mm -hmm. who in the most ridiculous way they can furlough people that they employ so the jobs that they are giving people they can furlough them but they can't pay themselves they can't give they can't get any any relief they can't feed their own families so at the end of this there are going to be no companies to then give these employees their jobs still they're going to have they're not going to exist anymore there are going to be no jobs there for them to have so it just doesn't make sense in so many ways and the fact that it infiltrates like the nhs the bank staff workers who are PAY freelancers, they might have been on the front line for three weeks and then work wasn't needed anymore because there were no referrals from GPs. So they weren't given any support because even though they're freelance, they have no guarantee of work, they have no employee rights, they couldn't access the self-employed income support team. So you've actually got frontliners who have been living on the zero income for, for months now. And as well as that, it just infiltrates industry and it's taxi drivers, it's you know, road work, mm -hmm. it is salt of the earth people who earn a decent living, pay their taxes, and they're just not being given any help because of how they pay tax. Well, it's just baffling. Well, one of the things uh, that the government um, what was pushing uh, at the start of this when uh, when the lockdown and, and the idea of lockdown kicked off was people signing on to universal credit. Is that is that an option for people? Because thereby, indeed, it is, it is a measly figure um, compared to potentially the, the earnings um, of the people who have fallen in, in through the gaps. But they would be something, their um, rent, some of their mortgage could be could be paid for during this. Is that not an option? I'll tell you what, the people I know and the people that I speak to would bite your hand off to get universal credit. We have have done a recent survey for Gotten PAYE um, and we found that the average amount of financial support being received by freelancers during this pandemic is covering less than 25% of basic living expenses and that includes those receiving universal credit and job seekers retention. Accessing what the government are calling alternative support mechanisms is, is just, it's not happening. It, so for example, um, with universal credit, if you if your partner earns or you have any savings at all, you cannot access universal credit. So any savings? So even if you had, say, I don't know, a grand? No, it's £16,000. Okay, okay. But if you put that in real context, if you've got someone who's renting, which a lot of freelancers... That's right, savings for them up for a mortgage, yeah. to buy somewhere. A deposit mm. or a wedding or... Mm. So I've, spoken to, I've spoken to pregnant women, freelancers, who were banking on the work that they had lined up for the, for the, the, the four months that have just passed. Um, and they were due to give birth, you know, in four or five months' time. And they were banking all that work for money for their child. So the money that they'd already saved up to go towards 
paying for, you know, anything that this child might need. They're now using it to live off and feed themselves and keep a roof over their head. And they've had no work for four months. And because they've had that little bit of saving, they've had no support from the government. So like I said, again, you've got people, employees of companies who've been furloughed on this maximum two and a half grand a month. And then you've got people who are just literally like not surviving through this. Um, the amount of people I've spoken to are, like I've said, they're already couch surfing, they've got homeless, they've had to move, um, they're relying on food banks, food stamps. Um, it's it's genuinely genuinely harrowing is the only way I can describe it and the fact that we're verging on four months and Rishi Sunak has still done nothing is absolutely disgusting and I just want to mention one other thing yeah. is that he talks about these alternative mechanisms of support that people can access they are ineffective and they are insufficient loans are not the same as grants loans okay. people into further debt Deferrals of any kind simply delay the problem and, again, create more debt. And most people can't access the grants he talks about because the criteria for eligibility is just too strict. So you've got people who are actually getting zero. And this is millions of people. This isn't just, you know, a handful. They, they, you know, it's, it's between three and five million people. And there's a simple solution and they just won't do it. You know, it's so simple. To, the solution, that day, you know, give them access to sites, that day tips. Um, you know, in line with what everyone else has received, uh, and give it to all taxpayers, regardless of how they pay tax. They have paid tax. Some of these people have paid tax in the for 40 years, and they're getting nothing. Well, Ellie, it is so sad to hear that people are facing homelessness as a result of this pandemic uh, and the support just isn't there. Really good luck with this campaign. Thank um, you Ellie so Phillips, much. showbiz reporter and presenter. Uh, really good talking to you.